Breaking news commentary from the briefing room starts in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the briefing room for another brief commentary between episodes. I'm your host, Marcus Atkinson, and I am like a kid on Christmas. And I'm not saying just Christmas. I mean like a kid at 5 a.m. on Christmas when the parents are still asleep and you're up, you got your foot pajamas on, and you're standing in the doorway like a damn stalker. And you squinting at them like, get your asses up. It's time for Christmas. And the longer they take, you start making noise. You start clearing your throat in the doorway. <clears throat> you start turning the TV up loud. You start banging pots and pans in the kitchen like you're doing dishes. The overarching point is the same thing over and over again. Get your asses up. It's Christmas. That's how I feel right now. Waiting for 9 o'clock to hit so I can watch the prosecutor prosecute the damn felon. So I can see the felon squirm in his seat. And retort, you want me on that wall. You need me on that wall. And Kamala Harris saying, I'm about to get you on that wall, damn it. You about to be a victim. This is going to be good, ladies and gentlemen. They talked about Kamala Harris being sequestered for debate prep. And then Donald Trump was clowning her like, well, listen, you got to be natural. You know, I'm not, I'm not on, all into debate prep. That's not really my style. We see that from the debates that you've had in the past. And listen, he got away with a lot with Hillary. Because for whatever reasons, I have my own opinions, but I think other people have theirs as well. Hillary just wasn't well liked. Women loved the fact that Hillary was a woman and she was trying to break that glass ceiling. And that's legit. The glass ceiling, regardless of whether or not it's Kamala Harris that does it or whomever else, the glass ceiling needs to be broken. But Hillary just wasn't well liked. And a lot of the shit that he said with Hillary was able to fly and people chanted with her, you know, lock with him, lock her up, lock her up. That shit's not gonna fly. She's coming at his ass tonight, and there is too much ammunition for her to come at him with. I've said before that all we needed was somebody to connect the dots on Trump's behavior and all of the things that he's dealing with right now legally and all the shit that he's said and done in the past to include rubber stamping Project 2025. Her background as a prosecutor lends itself to that. Now, when they said she's sequestered so she can so she can study this thing, that's exactly what she's doing. It was saying that she was going back watching video of Donald Trump in the debates. She was studying all kinds of information on Donald Trump leading up to the election, during the election, between um, his presidential campaigns when he was out of office for a minute or two. She's doing what she has done at the highest level for years. She is studying the evidence. And I love that disposition. If you've ever watched Kamala Harris on television, especially if she was in a debate or if she was giving a speech of some sort, there's two different styles of Kamala Harris. Style number one, which I'm actually kind of lukewarm with, is when she's reading the teleprompter and she's trying to give her information on the economy her potential presidency, whatever the content is. She's good, but it's not a damn, I'm in good. It's good, but when she is giving information that she is convicted about, when she feels like she's being challenged, you can see some of that sister come out, some of the, the sides that we've seen of our mothers and our aunties when they get pissed off, when that side of her comes out, oh, it's on. When she was at the DNC, and she started getting on that diatribe when she kept saying, consider, and she'd run it down, run it down, consider, run it down, run it down. So, uh-oh, closing argument time, closing argument time. And you can see the look on her face, her cadence changes. That is prosecution, Kamala Harris. And that side of her is about to come out. Now, this is what I think is fascinating. You have Donald Trump, who is insulted at this point. I mean, I posted something to TikTok earlier about the commercial they just dropped uh, referring to crowd size. And they use that genius speech from Barack Obama, our beloved 44. And when he made that size gesture, we all knew what he was talking about. And Trump has already been clowned about his little hands, which he knows that the public correlates it with something else. And it is very easy to get under his skin, but that is one of those things. And so he clowns him on the size thing. And then he starts talking about crowd size because this is Trump's obsession. I'll give Kamala Harris's camp a lot of credit for this. I follow uh, Kamala Harris HQ on Instagram. I follow them on TikTok. Her team is not afraid to go after his ass. 
the they go low, we go high bullshit out the window. And Kamala Harris is so good at being nice, nasty with it. So when you question her directly, she goes the high route, the high route. But then her team sneaks in and covertly gets in his ass. You see her response when she was being interviewed on CNN when they talked about the dumbass in chief questioning her ethnicity. And she was like, same old, same old. Next question. She went the quote unquote high road. But boy, when you follow them on social media, their team grabs him by the balls every chance they get. And you see it's working, which is why he's been bucking with his camp in terms of the mics being off. They know what they're doing. They're trying to goad him into being the Donald Trump that we all know and have learned to either dislike intensely. I'm in that camp. Or for the people that are part of MAGA Bates, that's the thing that they actually love about him. They're trying to make sure that that side comes out and they're, and they're doing that by posting certain things, saying certain things, doing certain things. It is not a coincidence that they dropped this video on crowd size just prior to the debate. Because insult is his kryptonite. His ego is too big. It is too fragile. It can't withstand it and it can't withhold insult he won't be able to contain himself he was a good boy during the biden debate but president biden because of his weakened condition wasn't necessarily a challenger kamala harris is going to come in prepared i'm sure that he has studied the thorough ass whooping that mike pence got when he was vice president i'm sure he has been studying the the past debates that happened when she was running for president and running for the nomination and of course, they keep talking about Tulsi Gabbard. Well, Tulsi Gabbard had her moment, and that may haunt Kamala Harris. Tulsi Gabbard had her moment. We're realists here. At the same time, I reposted that clip when she called out Tulsi's ass for being a covert Republican. And Tulsi was saying, oh, no, no, no. She didn't know what she's talking about. And I show fast forward as Trump is introducing Tulsi Gabbard as one person that is endorsing him. She was right. She called her ass for what she was. All of those moments are moot because hindsight is 2020 now and in hindsight we see the shit she was saying about her being on fox news con consistently attacking 44 that being our beloved obama all of that shit was true and here she is now on the side of of darth trump so she was accurate she did her homework and she's doing her homework on him and he's a whole lot easier to do homework on and so i'm going to be watching this debate tonight i'm going to be uh, filming my reaction to key points will drop some sort of video and I cannot wait. I think he's going to say some shit he can't take back. I think he's going to put his foot in his mouth so deep that his team is going to be like, damn, because he's already jumping the shark when it comes to his rhetoric against her. He has been admonished to tone down the rhetoric, turn the temperature down, as they say in politics. He doesn't want to hear that shit. He's been going deeper and deeper. And de she's stupid. She's too dumb to do a press conference. She's too dumb to field questions. I'm more attractive. I'm more handsome than she. He keeps going deeper despite the good advice that his team has been giving him about personal attacks on this woman. He can't help himself. I firmly believe that tonight he jumps that shark Hollywood style, Happy Days style, Fonzie style, so profoundly, so ridiculously that the show comes to an end after jumping said shark. I believe tonight is the night. That aside, I think that Kamala Harris is about to just give him a good old fashioned political ass whooping and i think he will be flustered i think he'll be like mike pence even more so because pence didn't have an iota of the ego that trump has and yet he was fl he's stammering and I, I, I want to respond that i want she was whooping his ass it was like flurry flurry jab jab he's like, can she do this it's like when you watch those confirmation hearings you know and they're getting their asses whooping they're flustered and but when she's in that mode she is very, very tough to withstand. And I'm predicting we're going to see that part of her tonight. And I can't wait. Until then, ladies and gentlemen, this has been Briefing Room Commentary. I'm Marcus Atkinson. Tune in next time when we bring you an official episode post-debate. Tell your friends, tell your family, like it, share it, keep tuning in. Peace.